It's time for Track Talk on News Talk 1240 WHBU and the new 103.7 FM and on Muncie Sports Station, 102.9 FM and 1340 AM. Here's Rick and Gary with Anderson Speedway's Track Talk. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to Track Talk. Rick Dawson, Gary Mong, we are in the special events studio at the Hall in Anderson, Indiana. What a balmy it Groundhog's is Day. Evening. This is Tuesday evening. <laughs> Groundhog's Day. and My, my uh, car said 59 on the way it in. It did. It rained. And I hadn't storms heard. coming. Did he see a shadow today? I hadn't he heard. He did not. Were you in Anderson, Indiana today? I was. Did you see the sun? No, but he's, okay. in, he's, in, he's in Pennsylvania. I didn't know whether it it's was sunny not, over there. That one doesn't predict it for everybody. We got our own groundhogs he, here that knows what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess you have conversations with groundhogs. <laughs> we did. We've got we got some at the speedway, as a matter of fact. We oh, we some, do, don't we? <laughs> destructive dudes. Anyway, he did not see a shadow, so we're going to have an early, early spring, spring, whatever That's, that means. That means it's going to be balmy on the twelfth, the nineteenth, the twenty sixth of March. <laughs> I just want it to be balmy during the season. There you go. There you no go. No rain. So we actually uh, got a racing fix last week. We did. Got back in last evening from Watermelon Capital Speedway at Crisp Crisp Motorsports Park Park. Park. (laughs) in Cordial, (laughs) Georgia. Great place. Great racing. A lot of exciting racing. In fact, we're going to talk to one of the winners here in just a few minutes. It was it was great racing. And it was a little different weekend for me. I mean, you did the same thing you always do. Yeah. Stop and go down, down at the end. But... Uh, I work the tire compound, which that's an easy job. That's why they give it to me. It's kind of boring, too. It keeps me out of their hair. <laughs> but then during the uh, races on Sunday, I actually worked, worked Pit Road, which I had not done in years, and found out that my feet and legs haven't done it in years <laughs> either. <laughs> we were both sore by the time it was all done. But had a had a good time. I was actually... I had the end of the pits, which after that last chance race, and they had a bunch more cars. I had more cars than anybody. Than anybody. <laughs> I think I had nine cars. I was watching them. It had uh, Scott Neal's car with Wes Griffin in it and uh, uh, Harrison Burton's car. Yeah. And uh, several of the other contenders were down there, but attrition at my end was kind of bad, too. It, it was at the beginning there, but then uh, I think one of the cars you just mentioned ended up uh, placing really good. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So we're going, like I said, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Some other racing news before we get into that. Uh, It has been on the wires and published, and the deal is not complete yet, but it looks like Columbus Speedway over in Columbus, Ohio, uh, owned forever, it seems like, by the the Knuckles Knuckles family, is going to be sold to the city of Obetz. Uh, which is the town that they're located in. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to race this season, it looks like. I don't have a whole lot of details yet, but it was published. And I haven't talked to Jeff or Jerry, but kind of a big surprise. It is. I think they've had it for probably 50 or more years, haven't they? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's been in the family for yeah. a long time. So uh, it's kind of sad news because they're a good family. They put on good, good shows. People. Now we'll have to find another race to go to in the fall. Well, we'll have to probably make one more trip over there on a Sunday. If they have a Sunday show, just to pay our, I don't say our respects, but That's not, <laughs> for what's, I don't know what word to use at that time. <laughs> don't use one. It'd probably be better. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you fly south, don't go through Atlanta. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the world's busiest airport. In 45 it. <laughs> minutes through the security line. And the second time in a row in less than a month that I've gotten on an airplane down there, and it's been well over an hour late in leaving. This time we got farther. We got to the end of the runway, and all the planes are turning left to get ready to take off, and ours turned right. right. That was the first clue. (laughs) (laughs) Second clue was when uh, the pilot came on and said, we're going back to the gate. We got an issue. We got an issue. (laughs) They'd already told us it was an older plane without (laughs) Wi-Fi. That really makes you feel good right from the start (laughs) to get on an older plane. But uh, they've Took them about an hour. They got it fixed, and we finally made it we back. We did. We made it back. I, I just despise that airport. I just <laughs> do. It's so big, and you can walk forever, and there's so many people, and it, it's just. It's I, huge. It's huge. If I can avoid the Atlanta airport, I do. Yes. <laughs> so. Hartsfield, Jackson. But it was nice and warm down there this it weekend. Was. It was in the 70s. The weather cool was. Cool at night. 
It was cool in the morning, too. Yes. I mean, we had to have heavy coats and gloves on until about 9 or 10 o'clock, but then it heated up and we was in T-shirts. Yeah. But it was a uh, no rain uh, after we got there right. on Thursday evening. Anxious to talk. I didn't get to do something that I wanted to do, and I, I put a call in today to Ken Dale Bastide. Him and his wife, Kelly, were down there. And uh, one of the things that they did Sunday morning, I wasn't able to go with them, but I wanted to. They went over to Plains, Georgia, which is about a eh, half hour, 40, 40 minutes. minutes away from Cordell, and uh, go to Jimmy Carter's Sunday school class. And he was down there, or supposed to have been down there Sunday. And I'm anxious to talk to Ken and Kelly and see if they got over there and, and get to meet the uh, the president. That wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be something? actually meet a, a living president. They just announced uh, last week before we left that he and Rosalind are uh, ambassadors now for the Shrine Hospitals, which is pretty cool. That is great. And I think Jimmy just turned 92 or going to be 92 years old and yeah. overcome his battle with uh, cancer, won that. And uh, and him and Rosalind have been together well over 70 years now. So that's, that's, that's a great story. That's a pretty great neat. story. Uh, what else is going on before we – I don't want to talk too much about the racing yet. We well, we might want to tell them, is the ticket package are still on for this they week? Are, until the 9th. Okay. What is today? The, the second. second. A week, week from, from today, today will be the last day you can get your advanced ticket packages. Ten tickets for $80, $8 a piece, or 20 tickets for 150 That's only $7.50 a ticket. Good for all the events at the Speedway this season except for the little 500 and the – Red Bud 300. Right. And speaking of little 500, um, when you had the website I up do. there, you told me, or I seen our, our usual first entrant. We've already got two entries, and we just just sent them out. Uh, Brian Gerster is the first one in yes. this year's race. Again, that's like two or three years in a row now. For that's Brian. right. Uh, and a great ambassador for the Speedway. He loves he loves that race, obviously, but he loves the Speedway, and he does a great job uh, during the off season helping yes. promote for us. And did a good job. And uh, Jim Sheets, local driver, already entered for this year's race, so that's pretty cool too. That's a good start. I Are also we... want to say, and I neglected to do this last week, our good friend and fan, and probably one of our biggest fans at the Speedway, and we've talked about him a lot, Steve Wallace, who wrote a song about yes. the little 500 in the Speedway. Uh, sent me an email last week, and Steve actually got a letter from the White House signed by the president congratulating him uh, on on his awards in writing and for the song uh, or the poem that he wrote about the Little 500. And uh, you can go and see the story about him on uh, www.whitehouse.gov slash champions. So uh, congratulations to Steve. Yes. I haven't been able to go to the website yet. But, uh, uh, and you can go to Steve's Facebook page and uh, like him and congratulate him because uh, Steve uh, has done a lot uh, with some pretty serious yes. physical handicaps, and uh, he's done a lot to support the Speedway, and we really appreciate it. So the track's notoriety went all the way to the White House now. It did. That's great. So It's great to hear. Who knows who might show up this year. At one <laughs> That's of right. Races. On the line with us right now, and I'm excited about this interview because this, this is, is one of my favorite late model drivers yes. of all time, and one of the best. I mean, he's whenever you see Bubba Pollard's name entered for a race, you know you've got your work cut out you're for exactly you. You're right. a competitor. But on the line with us right now is Bubba Pollard, the winner of this past weekend's uh, Speed Fest. CRA Super Series Speed Fest down at Watermelon Capital Speedway. Bubba, how are you doing this evening, buddy? I'm good. Thanks for having me on, guys. Well, we we appreciate it. Yet yeah, it was quite a weekend. That was not an easy win. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a long weekend for us. You know, we we struggled uh, from the time we unloaded, really. And um, I just I don't know what we were missing, really. Uh, I don't know if it was the tires or you know we we we've raced there several times and went back with the same package, but just struggled. And uh, you know, a lot of a lot of cars are fast. They're a good. 10 or 12 race cars we could win so uh, it definitely made it our work cut out for us and it was it was tough so uh, you know we were able to to pull through there and uh biggest thing is is not give up uh knowing anything could happen and uh, we were able to come out with a victory hey bubba tell our listeners what it's like to race at that racetrack and uh, as far as being a track that has no wall from turn one to turn four and the banking on it 
I like it. You know, it's a unique place. It's uh, real tight in turn one and two. Uh, you wash out to the, the D shape on the back straightaway with, with no wall, and you have to uh, really stay on top of your toes throughout the 200 laps to not run off the back. And then three and four, you can run the outside of the racetrack, uh, middle of the middle part of the racetrack toward the outside. The, the outside lane uh, kind of comes in there off of four. So uh, it makes for some exciting racing, and there's multiple grooves, multiple lanes, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Does it get a little uh, – does it get quite a few marbles and stuff up there towards the top coming off of two as the race progresses and it gets kind of slick up there? Yeah, it does. Um uh, throughout the throughout the race, uh, the racetrack, you know, takes some rubber. It sees it in the daytime, and then uh, from the nighttime, it kind of cools off. You got you got rubber at the top of the racetrack, and then you got to keep it. You got to keep yourself from going off the back of the racetrack. So it makes it tough up off of two. Um, I tell my guys to win the race, you got to be good off of two. And uh, you know, we wasn't too bad uh, there this weekend. So kind of kind of felt good about. It. Bubba's one of the fortunate ones that didn't end up in the creek in yeah, 4. I think, <laughs> I think we was talking after the race. We actually had seven, seven cars the whole weekend. Uh, over the weekend go into the creek, and one of them just happened to be the 51 car of uh, Kyle Busch. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was reading the story on the CRA's website that Speed 51 uh, put out about the race, and, and I think you got a – a pretty high compliment from a, from a young man, uh, Harrison Burton, said it was just an honor to be able to race against somebody and try to win against Bubba Pollard. And he said your name specifically. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it it, it makes you feel good when, when guys like that, um, you know, talk good about you and respect you. It makes you feel good. And, you know, he's a, he's a good little racer himself. He's going to be great. You know, I got a lot of respect for him and his dad for bringing him up the right way and um, you know, there's a there's a lot of young drivers up there that that's uh, that's uh, can be quite quite rough, I guess. And yeah. uh, you know, he's a good little racer. And there's a lot of young drivers that's coming up that's going to be good and um, a lot of talent. So that's what I thought. I I actually had to work this weekend. You know, the tire compound you really can't consider that work. But I was actually on pit road during <laughs> during the races and. And I was the first pit stall I had was was Harrison's, and it was I don't know what was more fun watching him race or his mom and dad <laughs> jumping up and down off of the boxes. But uh, it was pretty cool because he came out of the last chance race and ended up finishing second that race, and and that showed me a lot of maturity because you know as as well as anybody in that race in particular, it's patience from the start. It 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 is for sure, and. Uh you know to have the patience like that and you know keep the confidence throughout the last chance race and uh knowing that you got to race that and the chance you might not make it come up through the field like that from 24 to second was real impressive uh it's, yeah, well, it's hard to keep your nose clean and and be there at the end so it was quite impressive well i gotta ask you about the finish bubba i we all knew it was going to be exciting we had some late right race in front of me cautions <laughs> you got john hunter up there that just makes the track uh about three or four cars wide every time he comes around. A little rough sometimes, but then you also had uh, Brian up there with you and then yourself, and, and of course, Hunter was kind of laying back, but you three were there at the end were the three cars. How did, when we had that restart, how did you see things uh, panning out? Well, when we took off, I, I knew uh, there toward the late in the race, we had uh, had some restarts on the bottom, and we lined up third right there, and and John Hunter, I knew I had to be on my toes, and, and John Hunter there got a good restart on the nine on the inside, and we were able to follow him. And uh, my car really got off turn two well, and um, um, what that, the car, my car actually fired off a little better than uh, I think theirs did uh, when we went down in turn one, and I could I could really turn my race car, and I felt good about it, you know, up off of two. And um, I knew if I could clear the nine, we'd have a pretty good shot at it. And I'm not going to lie, you know. It's last lap. Um, you're racing for the win, speed fest win. So uh, a little, I mean, things got out of hand there, but it, a little bumping and uh, rooting and gouging, you know, what do you expect? It's for the win, last lap. Short track racing, that's what makes it exciting. Exactly right. And it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't all you doing the bumping. I mean, you had a little help behind you, too. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and if I remember last year, the shoe was on the other foot with the eight car. <laughs> it was, um, the, we had 
one of the top dominant cars I felt like last year should have won the race and the and the eight car took me out uh, on the last lap and uh the nine ended up getting in, into the back of us there um going into turn one and I was in a four wheel slide and I got into the eight. Um but you know, I wasn't gonna make it easy on them, I tell you that. Um <laughs> the eight was driving uh over his head, the nine was driving over his head and so was I. So uh we were yep. all going going for the win. Well, and then when you came around turn four, <laughs> Harrison was right there too. And I tell you what, I, when when I seen you had the lead, I thought, well, you know, Bubba's got this one down. And then all of a sudden, of course, I'm down at that end. I look up turn four. There's Harrison, and he did the dive bomb, and and he gave you a little nudge, but you it was far enough up your door, it didn't get you too far sideways. You were able to beat him. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I knew I had to run off in three hard, so he couldn't get to my back bumper. Um, so I kind of I run it off in three pretty hard, and I knew I had to use the middle of the racetrack because I could get a good run up off the four. And if as long as I kept him pinched down up off the of four, if he did get under me, uh, I felt like I could win the race. So, um, you know, it was a close call there. He had, he had a good car there at the end. He I think he took four tires at the break, and uh, I think it it showed up there at the end a little bit. But um, you know, we were fortunate. It's a fun race. Uh, it's exciting. That's what it's all about. Well. It- You've got that one under your belt now. There's one we we have up here in the this time of year, the Arctic. Uh, only we have it in July. It's called the Red Bud 300. And someday we've got to put Bubba Bubba Pollard's name on the trophy. Be great. I sure hope so. I told I told you we spoke the other night about the race, and I told you I was going to keep coming back till I won. You know we we enjoy coming up there. It's exciting. I remember our first first year coming up there, Lauren and. And, and all y'all guys took care of us very well and, and treated us, you know, great. So uh, we enjoyed it. I enjoy the racetrack. The fans, you know, come out and uh, to watch the race. So uh, it's one of the places I definitely want to win at. It's on my bucket list. And, you know, we're going to see if we can't make it happen here soon. Well, fantastic. you got a whole lot of fans up here in Anderson sure do. in central Indiana, and we're looking forward to it, Bubba. We're going to let you go. We appreciate it. We're going to be following you all the way through the season, buddy, and uh, we wish you nothing but the best of luck. Well, I sure do appreciate it, and thanks for having me on, and uh, look forward to seeing you all later on in the year. All right, Sounds Bubba. Good. Thanks for Thank calling. Bubba, Bubba Pollard, the winner of the uh, 2016 Speed Fest in Watermelon Capital Speed. Great had, driver. Had a couple more more races down there this past Sunday. Uh, we'll get to them as soon as we get back from our break. You're listening to Anderson Speedway's Track Talk. Honey, stop! Oh my gosh, that's Diggity's back there. You mean the new Diggity's Frozen Treat Factory? I heard it's unbelievable. Everybody's talking about it. They have everything yummy. Yeah, I heard they have ice cream, yogurt, custard, sorbet. And gelato, plus fruit smoothies, and that's just the beginning. I heard Diggity's has over 250 toppings, not 30 or 40 like those other places. And you can even get the candy to go separately. We can eat outside on their huge patio by the fire, too. Okay, let's see. Frozen yogurt, ice cream, custard, sorbet, and gelato. With 250 toppings or a plain old frozen yogurt shop with limited toppings? <laughs> Diggity's it is! Diggity's wants to cater your event. Diggity's can set up at your event inside or out and provide delicious smoothies, frozen cappuccinos, candies, and frozen treats to your guests. Diggity's is perfect for weddings, company picnics, group outings, sporting events, festivals, you name it, just call Diggity's. 765 393 today for more information. Heart attack, stroke, serious injury. A sudden health crisis can happen to anyone at any time. So when bad things happen, choose good people. St. Vincent Anderson Regional Hospital has the area's most advanced emergency care. With a state-designated Level 3 trauma center, an internationally accredited chest pain center for heart attack patients, and advanced certification for primary stroke care. We have all the resources to deliver the care you need for any serious or life-threatening emergency. St. Vincent Anderson Regional is the only emergency department in the area with an on-site helicopter. And our $27 million state-of-the-art surgery pavilion opens later this year. Bad things can happen to anyone. Thankfully, good people are ready to help. Choose emergency care from St. Vincent Anderson Regional. The spirit of caring. Visit stvincent.org slash Anderson Region to learn more. Wolf Have Incorporated, where imagination is the only limitation. We serve residential, commercial, industrial, and municipal customers as your metals warehouse and fabrication center. 
We do all types of fabrication using the latest technology with unmatched speed, accuracy, and durability on any substrate. Our ornamental division handles all types of interior and exterior work, including rails, fences, gates, and more. So contact us at MoFabbing.com to fabricate your dreams of tomorrow today. You won't believe these deals? They're too good to be true. You cannot miss this special. We're going to give you so much off, you won't believe it. Actual mileage may vary. Price does not include tax, title, and license. Some assembly required. Batteries not included. Objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Keep in a cooler place. It is highly unlikely that any sentiments expressed to express above anyway coincide with those of Wait, what'd they just say? At Auto Farm McCrocklin Ford in Middletown, we're not here to give you fast-talking deals. We take the time to make sure you understand what you're buying to make sure it meets your budget. If you're at Auto Farm McCrocklin Ford in Middletown, you're at the right place. This program is a presentation by Anderson Speedway. The content contained in this program is that of the host and guests, and not this station. First we're now ready. Yeah. <laughs> the Rolling Stones. Got one. <laughs> I'm not even going there. What do you mean? You cheated. <laughs> How do you mean I? What, you, what, you, said, I make the rules. you said the Rolling Stones were for the first note even hit the airwaves. Boy, Kathy Lee would have been really proud of me <laughs> yes, on that she one. She would have. And Wink Martindale. <laughs> now you are going. Too, yeah. No, I thought it was uh, Tom Kennedy that did that. They're both the same guy, though. Oh. Like the same <laughs> We're talking about oh, okay. Speed Fest uh, last week. We talked primarily about the, uh, the Super Series race, which I'm not laps. talking about yeah. that. 200 laps, started 30 cars, and had 18 cars finish on the lead lap, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and only, and, and I don't know how many of us running. It looks like maybe there were 23 cars running, but uh, that's pretty impressive, 18 cars on the Started off with 35 of them, so they had to do a last chance race just to get to which that. Which took as long as the Jegs race almost, yes. which you knew it would be. But uh, guys like Steve Dore, Harrison Burton. Had to make their way into the race Absolutely. through the last chance qualifier. Harrison finished second. Steve Dor, who had a tough weekend, it just wasn't just wasn't his weekend track because yeah. his, his he didn't have that great of a car for the Jegs race, and his he did ended up with a did ended up did ended up <laughs> ended up with a ninth place finish in the uh, Super Series race. But Steve Dor, another car car that was really fast, especially right after the break, was Scott Hance in the seventy-two yes. car. And I think they had a transmission problem. They were down in my end. They had a transmission problem. But he was in the lead and, and racing pretty close with uh, John Hunter Nemechek I, for a while. Yeah. Nemechek was making it hard for him to pass. I remember right before the break there, he was right on the tail end of the lead lap. And, and uh, John Hunter Nemechek was right on his tail. And he held on to stay on the lead lap there at the break. Yeah. There's... A lot of young drivers, and uh, these are we're going to see most all these guys back up here at, yes. uh, at our Super Series races this year. But of course, Bubba will be here. Harrison Burton, he's going to run the K and N Series, I think, out east. So he may or may not be able to make. But the 77 car of Zane Smith, and this is another young man. He can't be more than 14 or 15 years old. Finished third in that race and was bad fast the whole weekend. And uh, this Noah Gregson that finished fourth, another. Young man and Cole Anderson, the 97 fast car. Probably the fastest car of the weekend was the 91 of Ty Majeski. Yes. And uh, he had an incident right after the break with the six car of... Uh, Dennis Setzer. Was, it, was yes. Dennis driving it? I think so. Okay. It was either Dennis or his son was driving the Seltzer. Set, Setzer. Either way. Anyway, he had an incident while he was leading and uh, had to go to the town. Never did quite recover. Did talk to... Uh, Joe Nemechek, John's dad, uh, several times for a while, and uh, we're gonna work on maybe getting him up here to the Red Bud. Of course, he's got a, uh, I think he's got a full-time Camping World Series truck ride. We gotta give our hats off, Rick, to uh, Quentin Bear from Indiana. We had our Indiana driver there that got uh, 12 in that speed fest. So, uh, an Indiana driver did get down there, and he did make it into 12th Met, place. Messed up his uh, his primary car and had to go to the backup. Yes. And his dad told him, you know, that told me that you know they had to have a little sit down about taking care of equipment and uh he did tell us that ended up pulling that one off and uh made a made a respectable comeback so good for him the uh, nine car we were talking about a uh, william bryan and that's another young man by was is actually a part of the kyle bush motorsports developmental yes. program uh really fast car and a uh, good driver just i don't know you can call it impatience or what but um and then kyle bush was there uh he's 
You're only going to run three or four late model rides uh, this season. And uh, but it was surprising. He, he got up into the yes too high on the back stretch and ended up in, in the creek. The creek. <laughs> I didn't know it was him. I mean, where I'm standing, I can't see the cars yeah. over there. I see him when they come back, and I look down. Here comes Kyle's car, and it's all mud. <laughs> <laughs> So. That was unusual. We've always had one or two in the previous years we've been down there, but not as many as we had this time. Seven over the whole weekend. It was crazy. We had a couple of them actually drive through the, yeah. the creek. And when they do that, this was kind of neat. And Scotty Mellon, actually, the flagman actually had it on his video because he followed one out on Saturday. They went through the creek, around the field, back out to the highway, <laughs> and back in the main entrance <laughs> of the track to get back to the pits. <laughs> It's a it's a neat place and uh, hats off to Scott and his whole group down there. It really make you feel welcome. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce fed us breakfast on yeah. Sunday morning. It's just a just a great place. You get a to chance to go it. next year. Go do it. Neat track to watch a race. It's kind of like it's unique and it's fun to watch. It's like Plymouth it was when it was asphalt. I mean, it's a good racy racetrack yes. and uh, they're doing a lot of work down there at Watermelon Capital Speedway with stands and uh, facilities and everything. So uh, uh, we'll talk a lot about it. Uh, yes. Coming up next year, hopefully we'll be going back. So on your way to Florida, you always go by Cordial, Georgia, and wonder what's in Cordial. Well, now you know. Farmer's Market Road, I believe, is the one you turn off. Yep. This is maybe a quarter mile down the road. Uh, and as we mentioned, John Hunter Nemechek won the – Pro compact or pro compact, the pro Good. series race uh, earlier in the day. So uh, it was a full day. I think it was a little over five hours of racing. Yes, and uh, kind of gets you pumped up for the season. I'm ready. A week from week from this Saturday is the ARCA 200 down at Daytona Speedway. Yes. Uh, the Rolex race was this past weekend. So next week Daytona Speedway will come to life and. Spring is here. When that happens, you know the racing around here is just around the corner. Don't forget to get out to the track and uh, get your advanced ticket packages. This will be the last week for that. Uh, and we've got drivers and crews. Get your memberships in. Get your pit pads reserved and get your numbers reserved for the season. Talk to Jeff yep. Chu, yeah, who was down, that. down working with CRA this weekend. Also, our tech man. And he says if the if we can judge by the number of phone calls he had, we're gonna have a lot of cars this year in all the divisions. He's gotten a lot a lot of calls and inquiries. Everybody's especially in the figure eight division. Everybody's happy. Uh and and Jeff knows that his job is he's the first to tell you he's there to help. Yes. And so uh That's what he told us. Please please use Jeff Chu. Great guy. We are so fortunate to we are to the to knowledge have he him. has. And, uh, and the fairness that and he... And thanks to the uh, CRA crew and staff, it was fun being around. It's yes. kind of like a little family down there. We yeah. all go out and eat and work together. Everybody works as a team. I do. And uh, we just it just went off without a flaw, and I think RJ and Glenn should be very, very uh, proud of their crew this weekend. Yes. Especially the guy that that did stall, pit stalls 22 <laughs> through 30 on Sunday. We had done it for 20 years. <laughs> I don't know. I can't even remember last time. It, I don't know if it might have been ASA. I think I did it one time for them at Winchester, but I can't remember. We appreciate you spending the time with us this weekend or tonight. <laughs> We're going to be back same time, same stations. You can go to 1240WHBU.com and tune us in if you're not going to be near a radio. Or go to our website where we, uh, we post a replay of the show every week. Appreciate you spending the time with us. For Gary Mong, I'm Rick Dawson. Have a great week, and we'll see you at the track. Tune in next Tuesday night for another edition of Anderson Speedway's Track Talk on News Talk 1240 WHBU and the new 103.7 FM and on Muncie's Sports Station 102.9 FM and 1340 AM. And for more information on Anderson Speedway, go to andersonspeedway.com.